last time, which is on tape, so people can go and look at it, we talked about the theory behind wanting to use PowerPoint for a lot of things that people don't use PowerPoint for. It just happens to be that PowerPoint is a really ideal program for getting a lot of things done quickly. So I want to go into that, but this time, since we've already talked about how, I thought we would do some of it together. And I know that you're not going to pull up PowerPoint right now and do it at the very same time as I am, but this is being taped. So you can pull up your own PowerPoint later and play along, okay? Sounds good. So let's get started. Because the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. And this is the part that gets me a little bit confused because I want to find the correct screen. And that would be this one. Share. Now, I think you can probably only see one small section that has um, District 15 heroes on it. Can you see that? Is um, that what you see? I see the PowerPoint. Celebrate yeah. our heroes. Yes. Okay. Good. And it's, a, it's not a slide presentation. It's a... Well, it, it's not a slide presentation per se, yeah. but it is a slide that we are looking at. So what I wanted to show you to start with is the newsletter that is coming out for District 15 Speaks. I did this in PowerPoint. And I want to show you some of the things about it, and then we're going to do a little bit with it. So here I have a logo that I built. It's in a couple of little pieces. All of these pieces, you can see the background through. Can anyone remember from last week what that means? What kind of a file can you see the background through? Ping. Hey. Yay! Now, Steve? You're not going to take up all of the answers, neither you nor Dan. You're going to share the glory with the rest of us. But basically, that's exactly right. Now, this, where it says speaks, is actually an image. And the reason why it's an image is because it's a special font that I downloaded, and I knew nobody is going to have it on their computer. And that means that even if I were to save this out as a PDF, it's going to screw it all up and turn into some nasty looking thing when it goes on to whatever file, whatever fonts the person has for their PDF on their computer. So to be certain that I wanna keep the pretty fonts pretty, then I'm going to turn those into pings. Now, this is a series of a lot of little pictures, a lot of little pings that I've layered on top of each other. And then there are some text boxes. This is an example of a text box. Now, if I were to switch over to Word, which I have open on the machine, but I'm not sure that you'd be able to see it if I switch to it. Let me see if I can do that. I'm going to go share my screen, I think. Well, maybe. This is my worst part, and I'm supposed to know this stuff, but it makes it tough. Okay. Try Alt Tab. Oh, that's a thought. Because I don't see it. Okay. Alt Tab. Hey. Yay. Look at you. You did it. Okay. So now I'm going to go to. Now, do you see Microsoft Word on the screen? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Well, in any case, when you open up Microsoft Word and you start a new document, that whole darn thing is a text box. So you wouldn't be able to put anything around it without messing with it. So if I were to, I'm gonna open up a new um, presentation. Can you see this blank presentation? For an instant, and then it went but back But then it to, went away? Yeah. I wonder if there's, I, yeah, you're sharing your app instead of your screen, I believe. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing for a moment and see if I can redo this. Um, I want to share. 
I want to share my whole computer, not. Not one application. Yeah. Basic. Optimize screen sharing video clip. Nope, nope, nope. Newsletter. Let me. Okay. I wonder if I can hold down control and pick two of them. Nope, can't do that. All right, we'll go back to we'll go back to this. The point being that when I want to put some text into PowerPoint, I can put it wherever I want to. I can change the size of the text box. But more importantly, I don't have to confuse this picture with the text box. Right now it's sitting on top. If I want to move things over, I'm just going to slide the text box next to it. If I want this to be in front of it and to block it out, I can do that in Microsoft Word, but it's a lot faster and easier not to mess with that when we're in this program. So what I'm going to go to is I'm going to go down the second page. On Saturday, you may not be aware of this, but one hopes that you are. We are having the Division F District 15 Fall Awards event. And it's going to be on Zoom. And this is what I've got in the newsletter so far. I want to send this out to everyone on their email. And because I did this in PowerPoint, I can do that same thing. So first, let's look at the parts of it. Here is a part that is the, the image um, of the little logo here. It's layers of different images on top of each other. I need to save this to use. And Steve already gave us the answer, but someone else tell me, what's the answer? What am I going to save this as? PNG. A PNG. I am going to save it as a PNG and not a JPEG. So I go down to save as picture. So this was just a right click, save as picture. And when I get here, Ping is already the first one that shows up, but you can mess it up and go up to JPEG if you want to, but don't. So I'm going to put that down as logo and hit enter. And now that's saved. And remember the reason why we want it is because we can show the whole background through it. Now the white background is kind of boring, but putting a, a kind of background like this onto an email becomes disconcerting and doesn't work very well. And so I don't think I'm going to want to do that for my email one. I think for my email, I'm going to want to just have a solid background or just a white background at this point. So let me, I'm going to dump these. I've already saved this out in different ways, so I'm not going to ruin it. And here is that first text box. I'm going to copy and paste it. So basically control C for copy. Now I'm going to try to share my screen to get over to my email address. So I'm going to go to pause share and new share and where's email. If I put my glasses on, that would be so helpful. iPhone, newsletter, PowerPoint, SEA agenda. That's what I wanted before. This one might be it right here. Let's try that share. So what do you see? Do you see my, do you see my email right now? Like cable one? Nope. What do you see? No change. Hmm. All right. Resume share. Now, what do you see? Email? Something with, something with Sparklight. Oh, good. Okay, that would be email. Okay, so I want to send out an email. I'm going to go in and first um, start a new message. And it doesn't have a color background. I could do that color background, but first I want to put the logo in the top of it. So I'm going to go where it says see attach. I'm going to go to attach in line. And that's going to attach something wherever my um, cursor was. So now I go up to pictures where I saved it and I go to logo and I hit open. And now it will go up there in that part, but it also comes down here. And from this part down here, I could size it if I want to. And so that's what I'm going to do. 
often when you're sizing something, you should really be holding down the shift key. I wasn't holding down the shift key, and it, I don't know if you noticed it, but it changed the um, aspect ratio. So I'm going to do that again, holding down shift, and it's going to keep the same aspect. Well, it didn't, but there you go. That's, that's the thought behind it anyway. Okay, so now I want to add my text, and I had already um, copied it. So now I'm going to paste it, and my text comes up, and I can move the things around in it. Um, the other part here that we haven't got is we haven't got in our second section. So I'm going to put in an extra space and hit enter and go back to my first image. So I'm going to try to just trust me on this. I'm going to go to the other one and copy and paste and come back to this one. Because if I try to take you back and forth between the two, it'll become difficult. Okay, now here's our virtual meeting on Zoom. And basic, this is your basic email. It's boring, but it's going to get the job done. And um, it's got all of the parts. It's got the logo and everything that I need to have in it. That's one reason why we want to use PowerPoint, because we're able to quickly move things from one to another. The other thing that we could have done, and now I'm going to get away from our email and go back to my PowerPoint. So don't, don't, I won't lose you. I will go to new share and back to PowerPoint and share. Okay, are we back on PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, another option that I could have done is let's go down to a different one and we will make the whole top part of this where it's talking about District 15 Leadership Institute. We'll just make that whole top section be our email, just the way it is, which we can do because we're in PowerPoint and not in Word. So I'm going to drag Trevor away because I don't want his in there. I just want Maria's. So see all this area here is exactly what I want to have in my email. So I'm going to now draw a box around it. Uh, this isn't really a box. This is just going to grab everything that is completely under it. So this one is not completely under, so it is not grabbed, but this triangle up here is grabbed. Do you see what I mean by grabbed? They're all um, highlighted. So now I'm going to control G. Does anyone know what control G does? Control G groups. If you group something together, it's the easiest way not to screw it up for two reasons. One, it keeps everything on the same levels that they were. Nothing will slide behind something else and you'd lose the picture. But also, um, the other reason is then you don't lose any parts of it. So control G is group. Now you'll see that it's all in one piece and I can move it around. And that looks a whole lot better than putting it together in the email address. So now I'm going to right click, but don't, here's one of the little tricks that you need to know. Where do you right click? When you want to right click something, you have to be touching it. You can't be touching a blank area. If you touch a blank area, you're not really gonna get what you wanted. So I'm going to right click by being on the borderline. Right click, and now I'm gonna save his picture. Now in this picture, I'm going to call it Maria and I'm saving it to pictures and I can save it as a ping or a JPEG or whatever because it's already layered the way it's going to. Um, but I'm going to save it as a ping. It's always best to save as a ping. Now I'm going to go and share the other computer screen again. I'm going to get really good at this by the time we are done. And cable one, share. Okay, now I'm going to cancel that one. Do I want to save it? No, I do not. And I'm going to start a new message. And I'm going to put my cursor down here. And remember where we went to attach, push down on the down caret, and you choose attach in line. And then I can go to Maria and hit open. And now what's going to get sent out to everybody looks a lot nicer. What is the negative on this? 
it's a picture. If it's a picture, that means links don't work. So if you want to use something that looks nice, you have to be sure that you put the link into your subject line or down below because you've got some text in here too. So it's not a huge problem. And my experience has been that people don't really read a whole bunch of boring words, but this image here, they might actually look at. And then when they start to read later on and find out what the link is, they'll be able to figure it out. So just my perspective. Um, that's the big reason why we wanted to go this way. I'm gonna go back over to our um, newsletter now for a second. And there's just one more thing I'm gonna show you before we're done today, because I don't wanna overwhelm you. And share. Do you guys see PowerPoint again? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So now I'm going to go to one of the PowerPoint slides and I want to make this tip sheet, page one of Pyatt's Pathways Support Tip Sheet 2, which is a two-pager. I want to make it as a tabloid size because I want to print it out on a big piece of paper and put it up in the club meeting room where Toastmasters meets. So I'm going to click on it. Now, I've saved it in several little pieces, so I need to collect all of it. Another way to collect all of it, rather than drag your um, arrow all the way around it, is to control A. Makes a lot of sense, control A is control all. What's the next right thing to do? Control G, so that I can put them all together. So now I have it as one piece. Now I'm going to control C, which is copy. There's a real, it's real easy when you just think of it as their initials and you're just going one initial after another. So control C, I'm gonna copy it. Now I'm going to start a new slide. I'm gonna go file and new, blank presentation. And I'm going to go to design and slide size. And I'm going to go to custom slide size here. And I'm gonna choose portrait because I want it to be portrait direction. I am going to change the slides to ledger paper. Now an 11 by 17 is about as large as you can print on your in-business printing copier. You can go bigger than that, but you'll have to take it somewhere to get it done. Now I want you to see that they don't, it doesn't help you with the width and the height. It lies. So just because you chose 11 by 17 does not mean that it understands that it's 11 by 17. It thinks you want margins. So I'm going to put 11 here. And on height, I'm going to put 17. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Ensure Fit for the time being. Now I'm going to get rid of this stuff because it'll just confuse me. And this is where I want to put Steve's slide presentation. So now I'm going to right click and paste it. Now paste comes in several different ways. This is the destination theme, but we don't have a theme chosen. This is keeping the source formatting, which is what we would want to do. And so here is what it is in the size that it was. I'm going to hold down on the shift key and drag it out so that it stays in the proper perspective. Now, because it's an 11 by 17, it's still not quite as tall. It's a little bit um, less wide. I might want to take it down a little bit because remember, we don't have any margins planned on this one. But now I've got it to the right size. And we know what size it's going to be. So now we want to save it out as something that can print at any staples. So we're going to go to File and um, Save As. And choo, choo, choo. maybe we're going to go to Export. Export instead. And we're going to go to um, Change File Type. When we get to Change File Type, we're going to be able to choose whatever we want to have it show up as. And if I hit, um, I should also be able to choose under PDF to make it a PDF, here it is. I just chose PDF, 
I can choose standard publishing for online and printing, or I can choose minimum size for online. If I choose minimum, it's going to drop down to about 90 to 100 dots per inch. And that's going to be not good enough for a printer. The printer we want 270, 260 to 300. So we're going to go back up, click on standard publishing, hit save, and it's going to pr save our one page large format um, poster. And you can do that with anything, any slide that was in your presentation. So just to go back over what I've done, I'm going to stop the share for a moment and just remind you what we did. Remember, you can always come back and look at these. I'm going to stop share. Okay, so what we did was we had a newsletter that I built in PowerPoint. And I took part of that and con connected it together, saved it out as a ping to put into a really nice looking email. Another thing that I did with it was to take one page of it that I want to blow up large to print and put that into a new document as a large size. Now, even though we chose tabloid 11 by 17, there's no reason why you can't make this two feet by three feet. And for those scientific people who do those big format posters for poster shows, that's what they will do it. They can easily do it in PowerPoint. So just so that keep that in mind as the possibilities. Do you have any questions? I know it was a lot, but you have to think of putting last week's theory together with this week's playtime. I would like to know how you get rid of the background of a picture because I tried and I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> okay, so do you usually choose a background based in PowerPoint? Do you no. like choose one there? So it's just a white background in PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can get, it, it's a trick. Do you want me to teach you how real quick or no? It, it'll it, well you can put it in your next presentation that's what i'll do i'll put it in the next presentation because it's very useful but it's a whole different set of thinking skills and i don't want to confuse anybody um any other questions about how we moved things from one image style to another i don't have a question but i have a thought because okay. i've been able to do it in word using the drawing tools, I was able to group the, the different things like an arrow and uh, a circle uh, in Word. Right, so I should go back with you and show you why Word took you four more. I actually did this on the last one. So one, one of the things we talked about the last presentation on PowerPoint that we did was that it takes six moves to put an image and get the space around it for your text in Word, and it takes only two moves in PowerPoint. So basically, it's a lot less work to get the same amount of stuff done. And yes, if you already know Word, you might think it's well worth it to just do what you know, but that's not really the best way to do it because you love to learn anyway. So you might as well learn the new way and save yourself four steps. Anyone else? Well, thank you very much. I hope that wasn't uh, incredibly confusing. You'll, you really have to watch one after another to really understand the whole gist of it. Thanks. Thanks.